guys have any questions about warfare? She said my jaw's on the floor. I'm, I'm telling you a lot of this, a lot of the things that the the Lord gives me. I'm like, I'm either like, man, that's so profound, you know. And sometimes, like, I've been in situations where the Lord has just given me revelation about stuff on the spot. I'll be in conversation about something that's revelation will come and it'll just be like, wow, you know. So there was um, someone that I had some conversation with, like on Instagram at one point in time, and I'll, I'll give like just a short testimony about the revelation that came, but um, the, the Lord revealed to me how there was, there was some, there was some ministering that was going on back and forth, even kind of like in an unknowing manner um, between this person and I, and um, I was responding uh, just in text, and God had revealed to me that when you know, that Jesus you know Jesus was a carpenter but when Jesus went into full-time ministry he never touched furniture again right so he never you know we have these talents and abilities and that kind of was a little bit about what the conversation was about right but you know until that moment it was just something that I just it had never processed but the Lord put it in my spirit you know just in in that moment and and if you remember those conversations that we initially had you remember how um, it it started off just over some some simple crypto things, right? And you remember how it quickly led into the human trafficking, which also has to do with territorial warfare, right? And I told you at the time that I didn't I didn't know why the Lord was just bringing that out of me, why I was ex explaining that or talking about it, because I had never told anyone about those things right i never uh the lord never had me open up or talk to anyone about those things before right so um at that moment in time i really didn't have an understanding of why that was taking place i'm sure maybe now after everything that's happened and after everything that's unfolded um you probably i'm sure that the lord has given you a revelation to you know why those things were brought up especially after the stuff that he has given me in between uh, now and then and the things that I've, you know, the things that I've shared with you. So I'm sure that you have, you know, a deeper revelation and a deeper understanding. And even in seeing, um, even seeing like the screenshots of like, you know, my notes pertaining to certain things and like certain assignments and that sort of thing. So I'm sure that the Lord has given you revelation because somehow I knew tonight that that was going to get brought up and get talked about. So. Let me scroll down here and see. Um, is it wise to invite someone who is practicing witchcraft? Um, invite invite them where specifically? I mean, I wouldn't even invite them. If you know that they're practicing witchcraft, I wouldn't even invite them to my house, man. You know, I know that sounds, I know I kind of said that and kind of just like a, Maybe it seems like a snobby kind of way. That's not really necessarily how I meant it per se. But this is the thing. The the word of God says that he suffereth not a wish to live, right? Now, is there forgiveness, right? Is there is there healing? Is there deliverance uh, for anyone who comes out of witchcraft? Absolutely. You know, God is available to anyone who wants to repent and turn away and live their life for him, right? But one of the biggest things and deceptions that we see in the body of Christ when it comes to witchcraft and comes to people coming out of those things is they don't end up with deliverance themselves, right? So you got these people um, that are, you know, ex-witches, ex-warlocks and all this stuff. And like, ask yourself, when have you ever seen anything about them going through deliverance? When have you ever heard of them, you know, going through any type of deliverance and getting any type of these these demons cast it out of them. You you cannot say that a generalized person like any of us, right, who who just come from regular families who have never willingly practiced witchcraft, and and all of a sudden we have all of this stuff in our generations. All of a sudden we gotta, you know, uh, get delivered from spirits, and we gotta get all this inner healing and all this different stuff that we gotta go through, right? But why is it that, like, if 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 that's that way with us? 
Why is it not that much more drastic for the people that were actually involved in these things? Okay. I mean, you're talking people that are actually doing rituals, actually doing all of this stuff, you know, people that astral projected, put curses on areas and land and all of these different places. When you do those things with the kingdom of darkness, you are making yourself an open door to all kinds of things in the demonic kingdom. OK, like your soul becomes like a gate, like a gateway. Right. In 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 the in the spiritual realm. So like. You know, all of these people, there's, there's there's so many people out there that are just they're they're still witches and they're still warlocks. They've never been delivered. So now they're Christian witches. Right. And and people say, well, there's no such thing as a Christian witch. Well, there is if you understand it from a spiritual perspective. Right. Because they'll say, well, if they're practicing witchcraft then they're not a Christian, well, you're missing the whole point, bro. You're missing the whole entire point. Right. Because they, they think that they're born again. They think that they're made new. They think that they're doing the things of God. They think that they're receiving revelation from God. They think that it's God telling them to go lay hands on all these people and go lay hands on these kids and do all this different stuff. When the, it's really the devil giving them this this false prophetic and these and this different revelations telling them to do these things so that these spirits can be imparted into all of these people. It's not a holy thing. So let me see if let me see if you added to that as well. Is it wise to invite someone who's practicing witchcraft? Um, practicing witchcraft. So, is it wise to practice? Is it wise to invite someone onto the live who is practicing witchcraft? Is is that what I'm understanding you're saying? Is it wise to invite someone? who is knowingly practicing witchcraft onto the, the live. I don't know if that's what you're saying. I think maybe that that's what you might mean. Um, I, I don't, um, for myself personally, I don't, I don't mind. Courtney answered. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. If she knows who yeah, she knows who you're talking about, certainly. Yeah, that's why I said like I don't really mind. Um I, I can't give away too much information, but I, I I you know, like I got I have some soldiers on here, you know, so as I'm I don't pay attention to like the comments and stuff much while I'm uh teaching, so you know, and I, I do warfare and that kind of stuff before I ever even get on here uh, to begin with. So I'm you know, and even if a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of whatever's got on here and started talking crazy or whatever, like it's not going to stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. But I'm thankful you that you guys got all of that cleared up. So, yeah. So she she would know. And it's all it's all right by me. So it looks like maybe that answered a couple of you guys questions. So let me scroll down. Uh, the difference between uh, soul and spirit. Okay. Um, well, the difference between uh, the soul and the spirit, okay, is that your your soul holds um, all of the things about you pertaining to your mind, your will, your emotions, right? Your your intellect, your personality is found there. Okay. And. Your spirit is what is actually created by the Father. Okay, when we when we are, I don't I don't like really like to say birthed into this world because our flesh is birthed into this world, but our spirit isn't technically spirit isn't technically birthed into this world. Okay, like. This is what I believe pertaining to our spirit, man. When I talked earlier about our, our spirit, right, and how and how the Lord said that he knew Jeremiah before he uh, formed him in his mother's womb. So he knew Jeremiah before he formed the physical body of Jeremiah in his mother's womb. And the only way for him to, to actually really know him, and that actually means uh, in a form of, uh, of intimacy, right? Um, not in a perverted way, but this is also the same way that says Adam knew Eve, and then they birthed the son, right? Like, so it's, it means in an intimate, personal way. 
So he knew Jeremiah. So a lot of people, because they're, they preach from their natural mind, a lot of people think that that means that God knew Jeremiah in his mind. So God was thinking of Jeremiah and just knew all these things of Jeremiah in his mind before he ever formed him in his mother's womb. And that's not really the truth. He knew him. The only way you can't know somebody and from an intimate, intimate way if they're not actually there, right? Like if you had a spouse, but you was never actually with them ever, you would never know them in a in that kind of way, in a personal way. You would know of them, right? But you would never know them in a personal way, right? So he knew Jeremiah in a personal way. And if he knows Jeremiah in a person, personal way, that means he knows all of us in a personal way as well, right? So we, we are created as spirit beings before we're ever birthed into this body, okay? And this, this is the same manner that um, when, when it talks about someone being chosen, right? When there are chosen vessels on this earth, they're only chosen vessels because they were chosen in the spirit. God sent them here with purpose and assignment for his kingdom. That's what really being chosen means. It doesn't mean that you were born and then at the age of like 24, God just decided that you were his chosen person or something, right? Like you don't become chosen just because you are in a human body, right? It's like you were chosen in the spirit before that, like you were sent here on purpose, on assignment. And we have no recollection of, um, you know, the things of heaven or, you know, the, the spirit realm in that manner you know, at, at first, all right? So here's another thing that I strongly believe, and I, I will probably do a teaching about it at some point, but I strongly believe that a large part of the people that are, that are put here, that end up being here, they're here because somewhere along the line in their spirit, man, they chose to want to be here. We, and, and here's the thing. If, if Lucifer had the ability, okay, a lot of people talk about like the sin of the flesh and all this, right? But like your, your, your flesh is your physical body. It pertains to this natural realm. It is the, the avenue by how we actually commit sins in this earth, okay? But this is not where sin started, okay? Sin actually started in the heavens, and we see that with Lucifer, right? We see that with the rebellion. We see that with, all, with, with everything that happened in that whole entire story. OK, so he had like they had the option to choose what they want. So us as being spirit beings, being created by God in the spirit, which the word of God does tell us, right, that we're created by God in the spirit. But we're not just created by God in just this physical body. Because our spirit man was created first. OK, so we were obviously in the spirit realm. And at some point in time, like the enemy, some people have chosen to err or chose to rebel against God or whatever. And, and there will be people that will say, well, that's not really true. That doesn't really make any sense. But let me ask you something. Let me ask all of you a question. Why would such a loving God, okay? Why would such a loving God, we know we're, we're made of three parts, right? Spirit, soul, and body. Why would such a loving God, and I'm not doubting his love, okay? This isn't to doubt. This is to help you understand. Why would, if he had this love for us and knew us before he formed us in, in our mother's womb, okay, why would we be birthed? Why would we be birthed? And when we're birthed into this natural, into this physical, we're put in this physical body and we're birthed out as an infant, why are we automatically at that point in time already on our way to hell? Why is it that when we're birthed, we're not already on our way to heaven as long as we stay away from hell? You kind of, you get what I'm, I'm saying here. Like, why is it when we're birthed that our spirit needs to be turned from darkness to light? Why is it not already light and we just need to fight our light to make sure it doesn't get turned to darkness? Why is it, you get what I'm saying? Why is it that when we're birthed here, it's already like we're already cursed in a way? And we have to find our way back to God. Why are we talking about finding our way back to God if we wasn't already there with him? Right? You can put your comments. We can have dialogue about it, whatever, you know, but, um, but, you know, it would just seem that if this was just some form of experience that for us to live through, which doesn't quite make much sense. Okay. If this was just some form of experience, like why, when we're birthed as a child, why is it that every single person is on their way to hell and they have to 
the Lord has to come into the to their life, right? He says that He chooses us, right? And then we get and then we're born again by His Spirit. Why is it that we're not just automatically born in light? And why is it that we're automatically, even as use, that we're not just we're not uh automatically born again by his spirit, put here, born by his spirit, and then as long as we stay away from evil and as long as we do right, right, then we don't we don't have to worry about going to hell. Why is it that we're that that we're birthed automatically on our way there to hell and we have to be converted back to life? Okay, let me scroll back. Yeah, it's spiritual. All they need is an article from your hair, etc., um, to just cover them in prayer. Uh, yeah, it really is. You know, for the most part. I mean, it just depends. If the Lord has revealed to you that you got a witch, warlock, or somebody uh, working against your life and everything, then I'm telling you, you you better learn how to pray some warfare prayers. You know, I'm not saying that you don't, right? But I'm just saying because these people, they're doing this stuff knowingly, okay? They're doing this stuff knowingly. Now, there are other people like, you know, in the body of Christ kind of that kind of don't know that they're praying, you know, witchcrafty prayers and, you know, that kind of stuff. And that can become a different thing, right? And it should be done in a different form, right? Uh, it's, it's like this is where that comes in to either being the lion or the lamb. Right. And you have to allow God to help you to discern uh, what that time calls for. Right. Because there is a time to be loving, compassionate and caring for people because, you know, we want them to receive uh, deliverance and healing. But they, you know, anybody who's in deliverance knows that you got to take people. People got to go through that repentance first. OK. And this is something that I know that I needed to say as well, is that um, it's, it's good for us to always be repentant when we make, you know, mistakes uh, or when we fall short with God is and to have a repentant heart to so be repentant right away. Okay. But um, this goes back to the blueprint and to the map, right, of certain things that were talked about. And sometimes there are things that are manipulated in our soul because we have a soul tie that's connected to certain people. Okay. And if we've spent a lot of time around certain people and doing things with certain people, uh, whether it be through words, whether it be uh, through actions, and whether it be through different things, right? Um, if you really look at that, you will see that certain people that you have been connected to, um, you will see that they're accustomed to also do those things or to say those things or to be those certain ways, right? So it goes back to removing all the items and getting rid of those items, right? Getting the Removing the pictures, blocking people on social platforms um, and everything else like that was spoken about before and going through that process of breaking off all of those soul ties, okay? Some people think that they need this like super deep deliverance about stuff and a lot of times that's not the case. A lot of times they need the soul ties broken that they've had connections with with other people, okay? And then when those soul ties are completely broken, you will come to find out that all of those things that would rise up in you and manipulate you in different ways and shapes and forms to cause you to either do things or act certain ways or maybe even not receive healing completely or whatever the case may be, any of these things, it all starts at the root of breaking the soul ties away from you and every single one of these people, okay? That is the, that is the I would tell anybody that going through a deliverance or doing anything, that's the first thing that I would talk to people about is getting rid of the items and getting rid of the things that hold the soul ties and the attachments there because it's vitally important to get all of those things out of the way and you will find that so many things inside of you will then be healed. All of a sudden you won't have manipulation because that soul tie that's connected to that other person, you will be manipulated even if you're not around them anymore. It can still manipulate you because that tie and that connection is still there, especially if it's been over a lot of years that you've been connected with somebody, okay? And if they're prone to do those things, that soul tie will work inside your soul, right? And it will cause manipulation in your mind, in your heart, right? In your mouth, in your personality, right? And it will cause uh, things to happen that you wouldn't want to happen or that normally wouldn't happen with you, okay? And this also can be the reason why people tend to like to do certain things or, 
or feel that it's okay to do certain things. Get rid of those soul ties, and and I'm telling you that many things in, in, in within you will change. Okay, so it's not always about having to like beat a demon on the head. Sometimes it's about breaking off those things. Okay, and I I, I there's a reason why the the Lord has had me. Uh, release these things in a particular way, right? And these things have been talked about even before I actually did any of it, right? So, like, I knew that they were coming. I just couldn't run out and just do all of it on my own and, and do things in my own way, right? Or, or when I felt like it, because if that was the case, I would have done those things early on, okay? But the 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 mat to that is has truly been there, and I know that you understand that, so... Um, once you break those things, you're gonna you're gonna find freedom in a in a particular area that's needed. Okay. And another thing that I want to say to you and to everyone is that you know, for some of you, you have been delivered from things, you have been healed from things. Okay. And the Lord has done a lot of work in you over the years. All right. So, but for a lot of you, um, even in things that you may fall short in. You have to stop classifying yourself um, as a sinner, okay? Now, we know that the choices that we make or if we fall short, we know that it's actually a sin, okay? But we can't claim to have Jesus Christ in us and be made whole. Like when the Father looks upon us, he sees his Son in us, okay? Even if we fall short of things, okay? So we have to be careful not to actually call ourselves a sinner because a sinner actually is a is an unconverted, unconverted, unrepentant person. And I know that none of you are that way. Okay, so we have to make sure not to um, fall into that deception of reclaiming that title, right, back upon our life in any way, shape, or form. Okay, and he, then here's a, another thing: it's like that that many of you don't need deliverance; many of you need love. Right. I was talking to somebody about this, uh, I think, uh, even yesterday. OK, there's many things that people feel or don't feel be because they've never actually experienced the love of God. OK, and I don't mean that you've never felt the love of God for yourself. Right. That of God giving it to you or, or feeling God, the presence of God actually holding you or any of those things. I'm not saying that you haven't um, experienced that. Some people haven't. But I'm not saying that you haven't experienced that, right? But but some of you need to experience the love of God through another person. Do you get what I'm saying? Some people will tell you that, oh, you just need to be loved by God and just God only and God only, God only. And I and I completely understand that. Everybody needs to be at a certain place with God, you know, to be able to feel his love and know that we're loved by him and that sort of thing, right? So that we don't have this uh, misplaced, uh, this misplaced love based on brokenness or something still inside of us or something. Okay. So like, you know, we're healed and we're made new again and we do understand the love of God with us. But this is something when I was talking with this, uh, person who's one of uh, my intercessors is that, um, is that, uh, just look at the history of a lot of our lives and many of our lives either the marriages we were in, relationships we were in, all of these things, right? Many of them were brought together by the kingdom of darkness, by the world, because we were doing worldly things, we were acting worldly ways, all this stuff, right? Even if we knew Christ, I mean, I got baptized when I was 18, but I wasn't actually born again at the time, right? And even after I got baptized, I just told you earlier, like I met, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Joe, like we we actually met in the, in the prison system, you know what I mean? So, like... Just because I was baptized my life, I wasn't doing everything right by God, right? So we a lot of things happen in our life, and we end up with people, we have family, we have all of this stuff. And very rarely do we ever have people in this world who truly love us or show us the love of God in any way, shape, or form. Do you get what I'm saying? There are so many people who have just not felt that love of God flowing through another person. You know what I mean? So there are things that people are dealing with and that people are, you know, kind of going through in life or even struggling with or even things that people have doubts about, right? And 
the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear. The fear of things is not always the spirit of fear. Okay, like if you fear all kinds of stuff, then you're probably dealing with the spirit of fear, right? But just to be fearful about certain things, like just because you've been hurt a lot in life and 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 people have done you wrong and you've had to go through these these hardships based on relationships, um, and then having, you know, like that hesitancy about connecting with a person sometimes, like that's even though God may not want that, it can it can be a reasonable understanding as to why that's there. It doesn't mean that you have a spirit of fear, okay? And this is why it says that perfect love casts out fear. It doesn't say go in and do deliverance and cast out that fear, right? It doesn't say go through all kinds of warfare prayers against the spirit of fear and so that fear dissipates, okay? It says perfect love casts out the fear. The perfect love itself will take care of the fear. OK, God will have to lead you to a place where you have to walk and you have to go by faith, even when you don't understand, even when it seems like things could be fearful, whatever the case may be. But there's perfect love that casts out fear, but there's perfect love that casts out a lot of other things. OK, there's perfect love that brings in a lot of things. OK, there's perfect love that brings in a lot of healing. That's there's some people that are not completely healed um and there's also people that will tell people you got to be completely healed before you can have any involvement with someone or have any form of love in your life and that's just a lie because here's the truth of the matter none of us will ever be completely 100 percent anything the whole entire time we're here not with god not with anything the only thing that makes us um appear to be that in front of the father is jesus christ right but so none of us will ever be, you know, completely perfect in personality and completely perfect in our heart. You know, like we want to be those things for God. We want to be those things for a spouse or for other people and for godly friendships and stuff like that. But but the reality of it is, is none of us are ever completely that way. And you can't expect me to believe that God would send me out as a vessel out into the world to show people that I do not know the love of Christ and bring healing and deliverance to them. But yet the person that God has for me to be with has to be a, somehow a hundred percent completely made whole before God's going to completely do what he wants to do there. Right? Like God, if God is going to use me and the love that I have for other people, why is he not going to use that level and depth of love that he has for me to pour out into that person that I'm that much more personal and connected and intimate with, right? Because we're not those same ways with just people of the world or people that we're ministering to, you know, out in the world, right? We don't have that same kind of connection that we would like with either a family member or with a husband or a wife or something, right? So you have to understand that, you know, there are some things that will come about after the after that faith is is acted upon. You understand what I'm saying? After that faith is acted upon. OK, because that perfect love, when it drives out the fear, it doesn't just drive out the fear of being in a relationship or starting over again. Like it drives out the fear of all these other things. Right. Like the perfect love comes about, it drives out the fear of all of these other things, like worries that don't even actually pertain to that other person per se, worries that you may have had with your family, fears of all this other stuff, right? The perfect love drives out all of these things. I hope that makes sense to many of you. All right, I'm going to scroll down through the comments. I see there's about like 20 comments and then it always just jumps to the end for some reason. I used to say as a child that I just knew I was with God before. I was never taught about God or Jesus as a child, but I knew to pray to God and Jesus. Amen. Like, that's really, I mean, just to read that, like, that's just, that's just special, really, you know? Especially that you were never taught about God or Jesus as a child. And I do know a little bit about, you know, you and you and your husband and, and that sort of thing and going back in like your history and stuff. And so, you you know, you can you can see in these situations and, and, and not that everybody's situation has to be like yours. Right. For God to, you know, to choose somebody. But, 
you know, you will find that the people that God chooses, right, the chosen people that he sends here with the purpose, they are marked in the spirit. And I've talked about this before. So the spirit man of that person is actually marked. So the enemy sees that spirit of that person in the spirit realm, can see that their spirit is marked, knows that they're chosen and sent here for a purpose. They got to send here for a purpose. And they usually try to attack. You know, usually things are set up in the bloodline way before that. And, you know, usually those are the people that you find have been molested. They've been raped. You know, they've been, uh, you know, beaten and physically abused, you know, human traffic, all this different stuff that's happened uh, with these people. Um, the enemy usually goes the, the hardest on on these kinds of people or, or attempts to. Right. And the I was talking with somebody else earlier today and they were saying something about how their life had 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 so much hell in it. Right. The enemy had ransacked so much. But the Lord had turned that around and and to use it as power, right? They're like this person has been turned into a weapon for God, right? A weapon in the hand of God. And the reality of it is, is had that person never taken heed to the Lord, um, those things would still be used as curses against them. You get what I'm saying? They would still have all of this negative stuff operating in their life. And so, but, uh, you know, for you saying that you just always knew that, uh, you were with God before without anybody having to teach you that or tell you that, you know, and that's why I've, the reason how I've came to some of these things is because I, if you, if you know my life or had any conversation with me personally, you know, the, the time, the hours, the days, and just like the, the surmounted things. Like, I don't like to talk about those things, uh, personally, because those are the way God builds me as a weapon. Right. So I don't like to give away those things to any type of enemy that would to watch anything like this. But when I'm in those different times, I have for so much of my life, I've I've questioned God. I don't mean question about him being real. I don't mean questioned in a way that's negative. But I'm like, Lord, if your word says this, then why does it say this? If you meant this, then why did this end up happening? If you love everybody, then why did you send why did you send the serpents to take out some of the Israelites because they was complaining, they was involved in worshiping other gods and they were just, their hearts were, were crooked and they wanted to do all their own things. Right. And so like I would, the Lord would talk to me and communicate with me and I would get revelations about all of these different things. So it's, 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 it's so much of how I've, I've come to this place and, and talking about, you know, being uh, created in spirit before we were ever birthed or you know, put into a physical body. Right. And so, um, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, when you really understand that you, you understand how, if God had chosen your spirit could have been birthed, like I could have been birthed inside of, from some African lady that was in a tribe in another country. Right. And, and my, and everything that my soul would know, which was my personality, my intellect, my will, my emotions and all that, it would all be pertaining to where I grew up and the environment in which I grew up in. And so it's like the, the physical body, the, the, the racism and all this other stuff that takes place. It's just like, it's not just, just like dumb and foolish. It's like, it's just, it really, really, really is just a, a huge deception that the enemy continues to use over all this time. You know, because any of us, we could have been born into any type of body. The Lord could have chose to put us anywhere and we would have grow up learning that language. We would have learned, grow up learning the cultures, the heritages and all this different stuff. Right. So it was God's choosing and doing of where we were, what, uh, where we were birthed, where we were birthed, whether it's um, in the actual geographical location or whatever culture or heritage we were birthed into, you know. And I do have a little bit of stuff for, you know, a certain, um, certain cultures and certain, certain cultures of people that have seen more bondage in their life, right? There's more demonic bondage that comes upon their life, right? Because of certain things. And so, and when you really get into the depths of these things, like, especially when it comes to like the slave trade and all this different stuff. Um, you will see how like the, the Europeans didn't just go over and start rallying up these people, 
Okay. It was, it was their own people that had already rallied them up. They were already using them as slaves. They were already rallying these people up. And then there was the purchase of these people for slavery. So this isn't anything to justify anybody's behavior. What I am saying is when one generation, even if it goes back a hundred generations, 300 generations, a thousand generations, any of you that are in, uh, uh, deliverance ministry you know what I'm talking about with the with the generations it doesn't matter how many hundreds of years that it goes back in generations when it comes to these types of things you wonder and you see why certain types of races are still in bondage of slavery and they're in bondage of slavery by their own people because they were in bondage and slavery by their own people originally they were sold outright by their own people that's why you see in the cultures you will see that the ways that some people act and what they're prone to do um, through through music, right? Through hatred, through um, through murder, and through a lot of these things, right? You will see why certain cultures have more of this in them than other cultures. And when you start to look back over all of the generations, you will start to see what the real root of the spiritual problem is. You get what I'm saying? And I'm allowing the Lord to lead me to create such a powerful deliverance prayer um, for God's people, you know, that have that are in these certain cultures to to just annihilate all of these things that are in their generations. You get what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm talking about without me have without me giving out too much because I know the Lord doesn't want me to just to just come outright and come forth with certain things. So Right, the inner man knew to call on him. Yep. And so, like, uh, like I mentioned early on, like the soul is the soul is, although it holds all of these things, right? It is it works like a gateway between this natural dimension and the spiritual dimension. Okay. And so the, that's why the Bible constantly tells us to not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is the lust of this world. Right. And the only way we fulfill the lust of the world in this natural realm is by using our natural body to do so. But those lusts don't actually come from like my eyes don't have their own lustful desire to look at pornography. That that lustful desire would come from the, a place inside of my soul. OK. And it will come into my soul because in the realm of the spirit, my spirit man is accepting perverse things by demonic spirits. Right. And whatever's taking place in the spirit realm. Your spirit governs your soul and your soul governs your body. That makes sense. The spirit governs the soul and the soul governs the body. Like I said, you don't your physical body will not necessarily have a desire to uh, get drunk and wasted. The brokenness in your soul does. Your physical body don't, doesn't have a desire to go get high or to do drugs. The brokenness in your soul is what drives that, okay? And then the demonic spirits that operate in the soul, okay? And so if you're still on here, Jamie, like, thank you, Heavenly Father, for reminding me to, uh, to, to speak about this. So this is another way to understand it is that Scripture talks about us being a house, right? A spiritual house. OK, so I think most everybody can agree on that. If you know the scripture, you can drop it in there. I'm not going to go uh, get it and put it in the comments, but it talks about us being a spiritual house. OK, so for a moment, I want you to think of yourself as a as this this large grand door of a house or even in the form of like a, a large hotel. OK, like you're this house. OK, and you have on the outer courts of you is your flesh, is your physical body. OK, on the outer courts. So you have all of these these outer rooms and these outer rooms are mechanisms. They're your fingers. They're your hands. They're your eyes. They're these things that are on the out, outward parts of you. OK. Then you have the inner courts. The inner courts is your soul. OK, the inner courts are all of these rooms. This is the foolishness of when people think that Christians can't have demons. OK, Christians can have the, they if if. If you accept something in your life, then you're you're accepting it in the realm of the spirit. So you're playing with demons in the spirit realm. Those demons will have access to you regardless. The foolishness of so many people is they want to run, run around and say, oh, I'm sealed and nothing can touch me. I'm sealed and nothing can touch me. Let me tell you something that, you know, there are certain people when they've been delivered from everything and they've been healed, 
right? And they've been purified by God. God can and will seal certain people. But just because it's in the word doesn't mean that it goes over 100% of people 100% of the time, right? So, but my point is that you have these inner courts. Those inner courts are your mind, will, emotions, your intellect, your personality, okay? And it's not just one room that holds your will. You could, you could have, let's just say you have a thousand rooms in your inner court, okay? And that's probably a very small number. You have a thousand rooms in your inner court, okay? If you still have brokenness, right, and your will is manipulated at certain points and times in life, that means that some of those rooms are possessed by demonic power and by demonic spirits. So when these people say, you can't be possessed, it's oppressed, and they're arguing back and forth over wordplay, and the ignorance is, is they don't really have a spiritual understanding of how demonic spirits actually truly work. They don't really have this complete understanding of how thing, how your spirit is connected with these things in the spirit realm, right? So you can have, you could be completely free in all these other areas of your life, but if you're struggling in a particular type of area in your soul or in your will, then you've got some kind of power that possesses that room, okay? And I'll take that into, I'll take that, I'll bring that back. Uh, I, I took it from the natural into the spiritual, and I'm going to bring it back into the natural in another way in just a second. So then your spirit man is like the holy place, okay? And the reason it, the reason that people uh, are manipulated through Scripture by this because they believe because it's the holy place that they believe that it's holy by default. They believe that their spirit's holy by default, or they believe because they confess Christ that, they're that it's holy by default, and, and the devil can't touch your spirit. That's a lie. The Bible literally says we got to be cleansed of all the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. If your spirit can't be made filthy at any points and times in life, then the Bible would not even talk about that. Okay? So if a person chooses to allow their desires to go forth and be about money and ministry, okay, then that means in the realm of the spirit, their spirit man is worshiping at other altars that are not godly. Right. And then therefore it comes through into the soul because the spirit governs the soul. OK, they could say all day, oh, my, my spirit is in the holy place. It can't be touched. The holy place will really just be thought about as a spiritual realm, a spiritual place. Right. And if you want that to be holy, if you want your spirit to be made holy, you got to be cleansed of all of these things. you got to give up all of this worldly stuff. Right. You got to just, you got to be healed. You got to be delivered, right? And then you get to a place where your spirit does become purified. It does become holy. Then the Lord can seal people. But to have this idea that, oh, I'm a Christian and I don't cuss or drink anymore. So now I'm sealed, right? Like, it's just like, it just doesn't work like that. It's the Lord's doing and the Lord's choosing. And he does it by when he looks upon you and he sees these things about you. He chooses that. He chooses these things for you. Okay. And so it, it's not by our works that we achieve them, but it is by the things, it is by works that we deny things. We deny things, we get rid of things out of our life. We do choose to do these things, and it does take a work, as any of you know. It does take a work at times to get free from a lot of different things, okay? And another way, as an example, I told you I was going to bring it back into the natural about possession, OK, people don't like to use the word possession because they they say put possession uh, and it implies ownership and it implies takeover possession. If you understand what I just ex explained to you about all of these different rooms, it doesn't mean that the enemy possesses all of those rooms. It doesn't mean that he has a complete possession over everything. But if part of your will is being held captive, the enemy has possession of that until it's set free. Do you understand what I'm saying? He has possession of that. I can own 10 houses. All of you can live in all of those houses. I can own those houses, but I cannot make you leave those houses without a court order. You better hear what I'm telling you in the realm of the spirit. I cannot make you. You possess that house even though it belongs to me. You possess that house. You understand what I'm saying? You, I've, I've allowed you to come into that house to rent it, to do whatever. You're there for a reason. I've allowed you to be there. You have possession of that house. I can't come in that house and physically remove you. I can't come in there and start messing with your stuff, and if, even if I, I own the house. I own the house, but you possess it. You possess it because you have rights to it. I could tell you all day, all night, I could stand out in front of that house 24 hours a day and, and tell you and command you to leave and do all this other stuff, but... 
I'm telling you, and, and until you get a court order, you know as well as I do, you can't make nobody get out of nothing.